Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. We're starting a new series, which I hope will be very eye-opening to our viewers. And this is a behind-the-scenes sort of series. We're going to look at the underpinnings of your thinking, Dr. Shabir. Um, you know, I understand you have a, a slightly different way of thinking than many people may uh, think. And, you know, Dr. Shabir, you talk about all sorts of issues like women's rights. Um, you talk about violence, for example, uh, terrorism, so many different topics. And you have your own ideas about how, how to resolve those issues in light of the Quran and the Hadith, you know, and the tradition. And then the, the question arises in people's minds, like, how did you, how did you get to that conclusion, <laughs> right? How yeah. did you make that decision about what's right or what's wrong? Um, what, what sort of resources are you using? What resources are at your disposal? So I thought it would be really important and useful to, to viewers to understand that a bit more. Sure, sure. And uh, yeah, so just to give, uh, you know, uh, like something in a nutshell uh, to indicate where we're going to go with this uh, whole discussion. Um, uh, first of all, what, what drives me to this? Uh, you know, for many decades, I've been involved in uh, trying to promote the message of Islam to the wider community, to explain what Islam is about, to answer the questions of non-Muslims and so on, and, uh, and also to answer the questions of youth. And um, uh, I, I find that, uh, you know, in the early days when I started out doing this in the early, uh, like the mid-90s or early 90s, rather, uh, early 1990s, what I'm talking about now. <laughs> so that's how old I am. So I, you know, would, would answer questions from the youth uh, and uh, from non-Muslims. Um, and, and, you know, some of the questions would be puzzling. So I'd go to Muslim scholars whom I recognize as my teachers and I've learned from them. I would, you know, pull every book off the shelf that I think would deal with the topic. I'd try to find the answers. And uh, I found generally that uh, the uh, answers that, that come to some of the most uh, troubling and perennial problems that face Muslims in, in these areas uh, are, are not well answered by the common approaches that are out there. There is a kind of inward thinking of Muslims, you know, we're right, we know we're right, we don't have to answer anyone, and this is the answer. Whether they accept it or not, that's, that's really up to them. If they, if they disbelieve, that's their fault, and they're going to go to hellfire and you know, we are on the right track, we're okay, we don't have to worry about the others. But I worry, because uh, I, I want to make sense to people. I want to explain Islam in a way that, first of all, makes sense to me, and um, not just simply that I accept it because we're in it, but, but it makes, like intellectually, I can say, aha, that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then I can go try to explain it to somebody. And then if, it, if they don't accept it, that's not my fault, I know that. And I know that I can, cannot guide people, it's only God who can do that. Um, and of course, it comes from the willingness of the individual to be guided as well. It's a two-way street. Uh, but at least it has to start to making sense to me uh, to begin with. And a lot of the reasoning and logic that is presented by people who take the common approaches uh, are, are really faulty reasoning and faulty logic. So I, I wanted to get all beyond, beyond that. Now, it is not only in, in dealing with non-Muslims and trying to answer their questions, but we find that uh, the Muslim public is also dealing with non-Muslims. They were you know, interacting with non-Muslims at work, at school, when they travel, in their neighborhood, and all of that. And plus, they're reading articles and books and, uh, and so on. And yeah, I they're, mean, they're using their own reason, right? They're, exactly. they're looking at things and saying, how could this be moral? You know, how exactly. could this be right? How could God command yeah. this thing that doesn't really make sense, right? Yes. And uh, what happens often is that, uh, you know, a Muslim goes through life, they come to a certain uh, stage in, in their practice and their affiliation with Islam that, you know, they, they've reached this kind of turning point. They're not going to turn back. They're, they're solidly uh, established in the faith. But you will have youth who are, you know, in their late teens, they're thinking about these issues. And uh, if they don't get reasonable, logical answers, uh, they're going to turn away from the faith. And they are turning away from the faith. So I wanted answers that will satisfy the youth as well. Now, uh, there are uh, basically two uh, approaches that, that we can see, um, you know, uh, out there. Like one is a rejectionist approach mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, people write books and they say, okay, I was once a Muslim, no longer a Muslim. And, uh, you know, these are all the problems and, and so on with Islam. So, so they're rejectionist. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the, the other extreme is uh, the insistence that no matter how it is, that's how, that's, it, that's how it is, that's how God said it, we just accept it, and uh, we're not going to reason about it. 
So between these two extremes, uh, I, I try to find a balanced approach uh, wherein, wherein we, we accept that which is fundamental to the faith, that which is well established. Uh, the Quran is the word of God. So if something is in the Quran, uh, then uh, we, we can't reject it because it's in the word of God. We might reinterpret it if a reinterpretation is possible and reasonable and feasible. Uh, or contextualizing it. Uh, contextualizing it. We can look at the historical context and so on, but we're dealing with a text that we cannot reject. This mm -hmm. is the word of God. Uh, if we're dealing with a hadith, then uh, this, uh, if it's clearly established that this is the word of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, here too we are on um, immovable ground. But uh, hadith, by their very nature, uh, have been reported from one generation to another by word of mouth until they came to be put in the written form in which we have them now. And uh, there was a possibility of mistakes along the way. So with this in mind, we have more scope with hadith to um, not only to reinterpret, but also to examine the validity of the hadith itself. Is it really from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Or did a narrator make a mistake along the way? Or did this even began, begin as a rumor in the first place that people have just been uh, uh, promoting as if it was a saying of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? So I feel that uh, with this uh, approach, uh, as I, we will try to flesh out later on uh, in the series, uh, we, we can answer questions like when it comes to Muslims living in the West as minorities, can you buy a house on interest? When it comes to the question of women's rights and, you know, uh, is it true really that women are deficient in, in intellect? Where does that come from? Uh, what about apostates? Do they really have to be killed? Uh, what about uh, the penalty for adultery? Is it really stoning? Um, so there is, a, there is a host of issues that uh, are, are troubling to uh, the Muslim youth and, and present difficulties when we try to give dawah to non-Muslims. And in fact, just simply to demonstrate that uh, Islam as a polity uh, somewhere in the world can be established as a beaming beacon of light uh, for the rest of the nations. Um, so hopefully, as we go through this series, we'll be able to flesh out these issues. I'm more. excited to piece <laughs> together all the little parts of your thought into one, you know, whole. So thank you for that, actually. You're welcome. On behalf of Let the Quran Speak, I want to say thank you. You've helped us become the most widely watched Muslim TV show in Canada. I want to appeal to you to continue to support us. You can visit our website, QuranSpeaks.com. We also accept e-transfers to iGive at QuranSpeaks.com. And we're now on Patreon, so you can make a monthly contribution. May God bless you and your loved ones today and always.